Welcome to Electra Online and now we're getting to the next stage in the evolution of a star. It was the main sequence for billions and billions of years. Finally the hydrogen fusion into helium stopped in the core. The core began to collapse. The additional heat began to fuse. We uh, gave enough heat to the layers around the core for that for those layers it's called the shell around the core for that shell to begin to burn hydrogen into helium or to convert hydrogen into helium. That additional heat began to expand the star into a larger and larger star. Temperatures in the core continued to go up because the collapse of the core continued to drive that gravitational potential energy into heat. And so that was a subgiant stage. And then what happened was eventually the core collapse was halted. Something stopped the relentless pushing of the gravitational force pushing the core ever into a smaller, smaller volume. But at some point, something happened. The electrons within that core, because it's filled with helium, but there's, for every helium nucleus, there, is, there are two electrons, and all those free-floating electrons between the helium nuclei began to repel each other more and more, more and more strongly, because as they get closer and closer together, the repulsive force between the electrons began to grow. Electrons, they exist as waves, they create their own little volume sphere within the, the particular region within the core and when those spheres begin to interfere with each other when they begin to overlap the electrons really begin to push back they don't want to be that close together and though the repulsive force of the electrons begins to become extremely strong to the point where gravity could no longer push the core any closer or any into a, a more denser environment and the electrons push back to the point where that became balanced and that's what we call the electron degeneracy. The electron degeneracy is those electro electric repulsive force between the electrons that halted any further collapse of the core. At that point, the core would have reached the density of 10 to the 8 kilograms per cubic meter. 10 to the 8, that's 100 million. 100 million kilograms or 200 million pounds per cubic meter. That is about 10,000 times the density of, and I forgot a letter there, of lead. So, core is extremely dense, the, 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 the collapse of the core has been halted by electron degeneracy, core temperature is still below 100 million Kelvin, because at 100 million Kelvin, helium will begin to fuse, so the core is not yet fusing helium, but what is happening is that around the, the core, this region right here, which we call the, hel the hydrogen burning shell, it is just ferociously burning hydrogen into helium, causing the star to continue to expand. So even though the core had collapsed a very dense, dense region down here at the center of the star, the rest of the star continues to expand by all this um, ferocious hydrogen burning into helium and the star just grows and grows and grows in size. In addition to that, radiation is also pointing towards the core and the core continues to heat up because of the fusion process that's happening around the core. And temperatures keep going up, the collapse has halted, the star continues to grow and continues to grow and continues to grow until the radius of the star has now 100 times the original radius. Imagine the sun with a radius of about 700,000 kilometers at present, about 400,000 miles, growing to about 100 times that radius, 40 million mile radius or 80 million miles in diameter. Imagine a star of that size. Well, our sun will eventually do that. It will continue to grow, continue to grow, and that is called the red giant branch. It is now truly turning into a red giant, driven by the helium burning of the shell around the core, tremendous temperatures being formed, being, being generated, and just continuing to push the star against gravity to enormous size. Now, since the, the edge of the star is so far away from from where all the fusion process is taking place, the star on the surface is relatively cool probably about 4,000 Kelvin. Now, how long does that process take? It's estimated that process takes about 100 million years. We can come up with that estimate based upon looking at these stars as we, as we draw them on the HR diagram from these big clusters. The big clusters gives us a really good sense of how long these various processes take by the number of stars that you can find in each stage from a cluster. So yes, we know that it takes about 100 million years for a star to come from the main sequence all the way up to becoming a red giant. But it's not yet truly a red giant in the sense that in the core, the nuclear fusion process hasn't restarted to the next stage yet. 
So the, the collapse is, is halted by the electron degeneracy and the temperature continues to climb towards 100 million Kelvin. At 100 million Kelvin, the star becomes a different star. Now the nuclear fusion process will re-engage in the core, burning helium into carbon. But that hasn't happened yet. That is yet to come when the next stage happens. So now we're in stage 9 of the star where we're creeping up on the red giant branch. Notice the luminosity of the star is increasing by tremendous amounts, not because the edge of the star is getting warmer, but simply because the size of the star grows tremendously. We know by the amount of the climb on the red giant branch how much bigger the star has to get. Now imagine a star that is so big that currently um, Mercury and Venus would probably be swallowed by the Sun. When the Sun grows to be that big, it will grow beyond the orbit of Mercury and beyond the orbit of Venus and Earth will become the closest planet to the Sun. What will happen to Mercury and Venus? Well, as the Sun continues to grow and the orbit continues to expand and finally the orbit gets to, the, to where, where Mercury is, Mercury will simply be vaporized. It will be swallowed up by the Sun and vaporized, become part of the Sun. And the Sun will continue to grow until it reaches the orbit of Venus. And if it reaches to the orbit of Venus, Venus will be vaporized and it will disappear and become part of the Sun. And that will probably stop. And then if you would, were able to stand on the surface of the Earth looking up at the Sun, five billion years from now, a core of the sky would be taken up by the sun. It would be huge in size, of course. At that point, the temperature of the Earth, the surface of the Earth would be so enormous that the oceans would boil away and there would not be a, a shred of living material left on the Earth. It would simply be burned and, and incinerated to the point where there would be nothing living left on the Earth. It will be, be a dead planet, kind of like Venus, but probably hotter, with no chance of life to exist at that point. So that's, that's in our future, but don't worry, it's five billion years in the future, and I don't think anybody on the Earth here would have to really worry about it in any, any way, shape, or form, because it's so far in the future, I think humanity will no longer be there five billion years from now if we continue the way you are now anyway. So don't worry about the sun. The sun is not going to be our biggest problem.